Hearthstone was released in 2014, and ever since that year, I have constantly read Hearthstone is dying, Hearthstone is a bad game, why do you play this absolute trash? But I thought it would take it upon myself to actually look and see, has Hearthstone gotten worse? In order to do this video, I have separated Hearthstone into three different eras. There is the Ben Brode era, which is all the way from the game's release to Kobolds and Catacombs. There is the year of the Raven, which was the weird, quirky year of Hearthstone. Then there is the Ben Lee era, which is everything after the year of the Raven. Because <laughs> you guys can't see it right now. When it comes to the Ben Broad era, a lot of people refer to this as the golden age for Hearthstone. And for those people who think this was the golden age of Hearthstone, I do agree to some extent. Without this era of Hearthstone, it probably would not be here right now. That is because Ben Broad and Team 5 were able to make a fantastic digital card game that no one has ever seen before and reinvent the genre. Without the way Hearthstone was released, there's a good chance that there would be no Legends of Runeterra and Gwent and all these other digital card games that came after Hearthstone. But Hearthstone being as good as it was, when it was released really helped the genre actually pick up steam. Hearthstone was also able to build a fantastic mobile client that can interact with its PC client, allowing for games to be played across platform. And that was a really big deal at the time. And the fact that you could use your collection on every single device that Hearthstone was available for was a really big deal for the genre. When it comes to Hearthstone Classic, a lot of people have really fond memories of the game. And I do as well. There are moments that I will never forget, like playing Ragnaros for the first time or Tyrion being played free. against me hearing that triumphant music as his intro. But honestly, Hearthstone Classic was not as good as a lot of people remember it being. There was a lot of stupid stuff in Hearthstone Classic. There was Force of Nature, Savage War. There was just Conceal as a card, which was illegal. If you want to go try Hearthstone Classic yourself, there is a game mode for you called Hearthstone Classic. But you may notice that not a lot of people play this game mode, and there is a reason for it. Nostalgia has a way of only remembering the good parts of something, but completely forgets the bad parts. And even though Hearthstone Classic wasn't a super balanced game at the time, I still think what Hearthstone Classic did really well is introduce a ton of people to a brand new genre that they probably have never given a chance to. The benefit of Hearthstone Classic was that Hearthstone was a brand new game. There was so many things to try out, so many brand new things to discover, and it was good for casual players and competitive players. Without Hearthstone Classic, Hearthstone would not be here today. One of the biggest advantages Hearthstone Classic had was that there wasn't really a meta game. There was just a lot of people trying a bunch of new stuff and we didn't really know any better as players, but neither did the developers. And this is where we slowly start to see the problems that the Ben Broad era had. Once things were discovered as super powerful, it took a very long time for the developers to actually nerf something. One of the best examples of this was during Curse of Nax Ramus, where we finally saw Undertaker. It took them a very long time for them to actually nerf this card. And Undertaker was only the biggest example of this. There were a ton of cards in Hearthstone Classic that probably Probably should have been nerfed, but they kept him in the game and it definitely led to problems down the line. We also saw a huge discrepancy in the power level of classes. Some classes like priests were not really played at a high level for a very long time until expansions finally came through and gave it cards it desperately needed to be competitive. As more expansions were added into Hearthstone, we got to see Ben Brode and his team really try out some brand new designs that we have never really seen before. And some of them were really good, but other ones were really disastrous. And when they had a card that was super super unhealthy for the game, the same thing applied where they didn't nerf that card for a very long time and it led to horrible play patterns over and over again. Even though they were super bad at nerfing cards, when they had a really good card, it really showcased the creativity of Hearthstone at the time. Cards like Reno Jackson really showcased how awesome Hearthstone could be in a digital space and Reno Jackson alone made a brand new archetype in Hearthstone that a lot of players loved. I got Reno Jackson. Quest for another great example of this. It led to a lot of really fun and interesting archetypes that we have never really seen before in a digital card game. One of the major issues with Hearthstone during this era was the amount of cards that were absolutely useless. The reason why I bring this up is because it actually impacted the way that players felt when opening card packs. Just opening a bad legendary was an awful experience, but I think we'll save the gold economy for later in this video. To sum up the Ben Broad era, I think it's safe to say that Hearthstone wasn't necessarily a better game, but it was definitely 
definitely a more memorable time in Hearthstone. I think that's one of the reasons why when you ask someone what was their favorite time in Hearthstone, they're going to say something during the Ben Brode era because the game was so memorable. But because the Ben Brode era was so memorable, I think a lot of us tend to forget on how bad the game was at certain times. There was a lot of moments during this era where Hearthstone just was not a very fun game. Above all else, I think what Ben Bro did very well is just be the public face of Hearthstone. He was very charismatic and you can clearly tell he cared about the players playing his game. Let's move on to the Year of the Raven. The year of the Raven was not a great year for Hearthstone. For those of you who don't remember, this was the year when Gen and Baku were introduced in the Witchwood and basically that set the stage for the entire year. For those of you who are wondering why is this its own era, Ben Brode left after the launch of the Witchwood and it basically was this weird middle ground there where there wasn't a main director of the game. Let's start off with the major pro that the year of the Raven provided, which was the introduction of the rush mechanic. Now we saw glimpses of this during the Ben Brode era Era, but it wasn't officially a mechanic until the Witchwood. It goes without saying that the Rush mechanic made a ginormous impact on the way that they design Hearthstone cards, and we see it still quite often with the newest expansion coming out. And that's basically it for the good things that happened during the year of the Raven. The one smaller thing is that we saw an uptick from nerfs from the developers because this year's power level was a lot lower than the previous, so they kind of needed to adjust cards from the previous years. But there was a lot of really bad moments during this year, it is consistent of basically seeing the same thing over and over again with Gen and Baku, with a couple of decks squeezing their way into the metagame. This is the year I think a lot of people felt like they lost a lot of interest into Hearthstone. When you have such a powerful entity in the game that's completely dominating the rest, it's something that you kind of get sick and tired of seeing. Also, there was Shutterwalk, but I don't think Shutterwalk really comes into the equation here. You could clearly tell with a lack of a game director that this game really suffered from the lack of a direction because it just basically felt like this year didn't really serve a big purpose. It was kind of just this weird filler year that a lot of people did not really enjoy. And I guarantee this is when Hearthstone lost a lot of their players. Without really dragging on this year too much, I did a whole video called Hearthstone's Biggest Mistake that kind of goes through what this year actually meant for Hearthstone and what it actually meant for the future of Hearthstone. Why does Gen and Baku set up the power level for future expansion? Well, here is the thing. If you aim high for everything in an expansion and some things are a little bit too strong, it's much easier to bring cards down to match the power level of the rest of the expansion. So definitely go watch that video if you want to learn more about the year of the Raven. But let's move on to the Ben Lee era. I'm Ben Lee, game director of Hearthstone. With Ben Lee stepping in as Hearthstone's new game director, Hearthstone did a lot of different things compared to Ben Brode. The biggest one is adding brand new game modes into Hearthstone. We saw the introduction of Hearthstone Battlegrounds, Hearthstone Mercenaries, and Duels. And even if you don't like any of those game modes, you really have to give Ben Lee credit for pushing Hearthstone to be a bigger game than just a digital card game. And that's probably the biggest difference between Ben Lee and Ben Brode is that Ben Lee was much more willing to make a lot more changes. And a lot of those changes ended up being extremely beneficial for the game. We saw a brand new philosophy on card balance with a ton more nerfs and some buffs sprinkled in that allowed the metagame to feel a lot fresher for longer. Because there were more frequent patches, it was a lot harder for people to keep up with crafting cards and it really showed showcased how bad the old guild system was in Hearthstone, but they introduced the Battle Pass, which had a very shaky start right at the beginning, but ended up being one of the best things Hearthstone has added. Free to play players don't have nearly as hard of a time of crafting meta decks more consistently. There is a huge surplus of gold being added as long as you play the game. There was also a ton of quality of life changes to Hearthstone. We got duplicate protection, which is arguably the best change that they've added. For new and returning players, you got a brand new meta deck to try out immediately. In compared to Hearthstone's old ranking system, their new one enabled players to get so much more rewards just for playing and climbing the ladder. We also saw a ton more communication from developers, even though not all the communication was well timed. It was very nice to see the developers being a lot more transparent on why they're making decisions, and it made the Hearthstone experience just a little bit better. You know what also made the Hearthstone experience a lot better? Adding a brand new class to the game. The addition of Demon Hunter, even though it was released at an extremely high power level, allowed a brand new way to 
play Hearthstone that new players and older players never thought would actually happen into the game. It is very clear that Benly did a lot of great stuff for Hearthstone, but we still need to discuss the game. Hearthstone is just a different game than what it used to be. This is because the team has been trying a lot more riskier designs. Some of them pay off a ton, others do not. But the biggest thing is that Hearthstone just feels a lot more consistent. Rather than having a ton of pack fillers, all the cards that they release now in Hearthstone feel like they're just powerful enough to actually be played in the main game mode. The reason why there are a lot better cards in this era is because the Ben Lee development team was much more willing to take risks because they knew that they were going to nerf cards a lot faster. And because of this balanced philosophy, they were completely fine with giving every single class extremely powerful tools, giving cards that were a mana cheaper than they probably should have been or giving a card a higher power level because they could always nerf the card if the card ends up being way too strong. And this was the major symptom from the year of the Raven. And because of this riskier design philosophy, Hearthstone changed quite considerably compared to what it was during the Ben Brode era. The problem with this design philosophy is that the game can get too fast. And we saw this more than ever during United and Stormwind, where the game felt completely different than what it was during the Ben Brode era. We could also see that the client that was made in 2014 was having a lot more troubles keeping up with the team's ambitions with new animations and game modes causing it to lag more than ever. But to answer the original question, has Hearthstone gotten worse? No. But is it different? Absolutely. Hearthstone is almost a decade old at this point and exists in a new world of competition that it literally helped create. The biggest difference between both the game directors is that Ben Brode was making a game for new card game players, while Ben Lee is making a game for an experienced player. Both of these design philosophies definitely change the way the game feels and plays. Hearthstone is also catering to veteran players more than ever, so complexity is going to increase. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but it's just a different thing. It can mask the actual dynamics of a metagame. The common complaint of Hearthstone now is that people want a board based centric metagame. But board centric metagames have been around, but it's not going to be like older Hearthstone. The game is just different. And for those of you who wanted a definite answer on whether or not Hearthstone has gotten worse, you're not going to get one. The point of this video is to give you some perspective on how far this game has come and how well it's doing now. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you ended up enjoying it. Have a great day.